What's up, everyone? What's happening? Uh, today, we're going to talk about rethinking your pentatonics. This is kind of a, uh, an expansion on the video I did yesterday. Oh, by the way, discount on the Beato book today. It's only in PDF. This is my physical copy. RB125 is the code, 20% off. I do that on my live streams uh for the day so it'll be for the next 24 hours rb125 uh speaking of tone so i'm playing right now through my marshall uh jubilee uh it's a miniature jubilee head what's up trolls what's up pat julian karen brian everybody um i'm using a tube screamer Although I've been kind of going back and forth between the Tube Screamer and my Red Dirt Keeley pedal. I'm not endorsed by Keeley. Um, uh, but I've got my Tube, uh, tube Screamer in. Um, and uh, that's just an amp sound right there. So that's the Tube Screamer. Uh, pretty low volume, as you can hear, right? That's a, you know, a really good, um, I guess, working solo uh, tone here. Um, wait, what are you? Ricky Steve, wait. Ricky Steves, I don't know what that means, but there we go. I'm not sure what you mean. Uh, let me fix this thing here. This is, uh, I've got to fix this window a little bit. There we go. Okay. Yeah, so I'm using a Tube Screamer. That's kind of where I get, get but but here, check it out. So here's my, um, this is without the Tube Screamer. You, I actually have way, I'm not sure you can tell that, but I actually have way more bottom end. bottom end off the uh, off the sound gives a little bit more sustain um, and I think it's a uh, I think it's a really usable tone for this so I want to talk about about rethinking the pentatonics I thought a lot about this when I was um, doing the video yesterday the the one solo that I did um, for those of you that saw it I did Steely Dan Peg now that doesn't really it's interesting because it, that actually uses one pentatonic in it but most of that solo is uh, is I mean it's all over the place actually he plays a uh, then uh, That's pentatonic. Then, but this lick, totally cool lick there. That's uh, Jay Graydon. Uh, then he goes. But right here, he uses this pentatonic. This. But he's in G. That song, uh, a Pegasus. Then it goes, when it goes to the four chord, because it's a blues. Right? And then, um, uh, then it goes. It's exactly the same form of bridge. It goes to the five chord.
Um, so Jay does talk about that in the uh, in his solo in that video in the video, but the lick that he plays on the recording is not the lick that he played in the the video that he did with Tim Pierce. Um, he doesn't play the same thing that he actually plays on the recording, um, which is interesting. Like that lick in the video, he plays. Or, he plays this pentatonic. As opposed to that. You can definitely hear that he's playing that D sharp. Um, and then this lick he plays differently in the recording. Uh, in, the, in the one he did with Tim, he plays... He, no, he plays... Something like that. I think that's what he plays. Which he could play, but on the recordings, he plays that. Um, anyway, so the, the thing that, that I took from this, because I was using a lot of 70s solos yesterday when I did Hotel California, uh, all the extra notes that they do where they actually go in and they, he, they define the chords by playing the thirds in Hotel California, it's all over the place, you know. That goes right to the third. Then he goes. That's that's all pentatonic. Um, no. But then he goes to that note, which is the third of of the E of the uh, E major chord. Um, and then uh, um, Uh, then he goes. Which I had in the video. And he goes down to the third there. Um... So in that solo, what they're doing, oh, I don't have enough gain to do my whip zip slide, Dean. Um, that solo, they're, 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 uh, they're basing it around the minor pentatonic, and every time they, uh, that there's a chord change that they want to make really obvious, they, they go into those, into the third of the chord, okay? Um, and... One of the things that I noticed, so they do the minor third bend there, and then Terry Kath in the Chicago solo, when he plays, uh, you know, so he's in, um, then he, you know, he's doing that minor third bend right there then. So this has a minor third bend in it. So he goes. A lot of guys did that. That was like a real um, part of the 70s sound were those minor third bends. And uh, you'll notice though that um, a lot of the times those things would come out of this position. So you, let's, you take this pentatonic, your basic position there, let's say I'm doing an A minor, but if they would go, and they would do that minor third bend there to accommodate the uh, from, from the E to the G. And they would typically go up in position there because you wouldn't, you can do it, you can do it there, but in, in the key of A minor, uh, it's, it's a little bit harder because there's a lot more string tension down here at the fifth fret to, to do a minor third bend than to say, let's say you're in B minor, like in Hotel California. It's easier to do the bend from F sharp to D or uh, there. Both of those are pretty, um, um, 
I'd say both of those are pretty e equally easy once you get up to the seventh fret. The, the string tension, unless you're um, unless you're playing, uh, uh, you know, really like eight strings, like eights, it doesn't really uh, it doesn't really matter as much. But if I'm doing so, one of the things that you want to be able to do is most people can play out of this position, right? If you go back one pentatonic position and you and you practice all the bends that you have in there. So you got right What you want to do is you want to try and typically on the A string I'm going to pull down. I'm going to want to go to that note. Or, or I go. I'm trying to hit that. You gotta really, I think it's easier to pull down. Here you have the whole step bend. Here you have the minor third. And here you have the minor third. If you move up one position, so right here, I've got, so that's the next position up above this. Uh, so that's, if I'm in B minor, That's where I have my minor third bend there, because um, and knowing where those third bends are will get you out of these kind of the typical patterns that you might have. Right there, right? Or... Um, also, knowing where those blues notes are in those positions, right? Because you want to be able to include those in to make your pentatonics more interesting. Now you can do it here, right? Or, you can do it with a bend, or you can do it, you can do it where you actually play the notes, or you can slide. But if you move up into this position, thank you, English Jake. So I have that half step there in my blues out of this position. Then you have it up here too. I find that that's actually a very handy one to use there. So you start here, B minor, right? And then you get into this, this position. Most people know that, or they at least know this part of the, part of the scale. But what you wanna do is go from here. You wanna put in those, you want to put in that blues note there, and you want to put it in up the octave here. Or. Or here. You want to be able to play. 
You want to know where all those notes are. Right? Um, so I'm playing that, all those... Yeah. Right? That's what's cool about that is once you have that blue note, this is really handy here. Did you go? It's cool. Right here, this. And then you have it here. Knowing where all those, um, where all those blues notes are is really handy. And also those descending uh, slides are really, really. Those are really hard. I find that that um, a lot of people don't really have that uh, that move necessarily. There. So. You do a half step slide or a whole step. What's up, Subi? Um, so, having that extra note there. Uh, having that extra. Having that in every position, that flat five, is really, really important. Um, also, uh, you've, I mean, I think most people would, you know, would play would play this position, and then they'll go up here. Would play up in this position. would play in that position there. Oh, by the way, so so Pal Guitars asks if these are DiMarzio Super Distortions. No, these are actually recreations of like a 59 Les Paul pickups. I can't remember the, um, I can't remember the company. My buddy Dave put them in for me. Um, and I love these pickups. They're amazing, amazing sounding pickups. Um, I think that, that it's, it, it's just, they're so creamy. They've got great low end. They do look like DiMarzio's though. Um, but, but, um, uh, I think that they're, they're killer pickups. But anyway, so this position here is great, but you don't want to neglect this one. So I'm in B minor. This is a great, great position here. This one. Uh, because that will really help you connect these ideas. This is probably the most um, neglected of the pe pentatonic positions. I think. Now, one of the things that uh, that that uh, Terry Kath does in that solo. What's up, Frank? 
is, uh, is that he combines major and minor blues. And I talk about this a lot, but I can't really emphasize it a lot. Um, is to, if you got, you know, if you're at a dominant chord or a major chord, is to use that major third, like BB would use, where you make it major blues. So, and if you make it a major blues, it's, so I'm kind of using both of those there. So I use, I love that, that, Major third there. Uh. Uh, major third, and then putting it in there with the uh, the fourth, with the fourth and the flat seven is also cool. You got the flat seven, root, third, four. I love that sound. Now I'm using, so, Bending that flat seven, right, into the flat third is really cool. That's what Brendan O'Brien does on that hard to handle solo. Uh, Neil Schoen does that a lot. That is a great, you know. Love that, love that sound. Don't ignore the major third there, you know, when you go up to. Uh, that's more like Larry Carlton kind of stuff like that. If I use that. Right? So I'm using it, bending my thir my flat my uh, my thirteenth right into that flat seven. So anyway, so you got the flat seven and the you have the flat seven and the flat third and the natural third. Then you have the natural third and the fourth. Right? And then you have the um, flat third and the and the and the flat seven. Um <clears throat> so those notes, adding those notes to the pentatonic is um you know, knowing where they are in each position. So if I'm here, then I have to say, okay, well, where are these notes down here, right? Because this is you know important to not be locked into one position. So if I so, so now this is kind of weird, right? Also that, using that, um, uh, 
You can also just play straight uh, sus, you know, with a third. That's always a really, really, uh, really cool sound. But it's nice when you hear that. I love it. Right? You think about Almond Brothers there. So I'm doing it. Then I'm going into this position. So I've got here. Then you want to put those bends in there. Um, so those little, little ideas are, um, are really, really helpful, I think, to try and break out of just the standard, you know the standard kind of pentatonic lines like that. Also knowing um, if you're gonna take this thing to completion, then knowing where the major pentatonic is and all its related positions off the same, in the same area. love that though, right? So I'm using that major pentatonic here. Then you go up here. And then. That would be all my major pentatonic lines that are in this, uh, that would go with this B major chord. Then, you know, when you want to start getting into more interesting things, like the Eagles were doing, where you're actually playing over the, um, where you're playing over the, the, the actual chord tone, you know, you're using chord tones and you're changing the, the scales or the modes. What they're doing, they're not really changing the modes. They're basing it off like the minor pentatonic, uh, you know, because it's... And then there, when it when there's an alteration in it, um, then they will go to that chord and they will play a um, the the chord tones or the triad or the dominant chord there. Like when it goes to the F sharp seven, right? Um, right where it changes chord, they, he goes right to that that line. And and then he goes to that third there. Um, uh, so another thing to do too then is that the next logical extension with that is to add those notes from Dorian, for example, like Peter Frampton does. I always. Love to use Peter Frampton because he does it the best. Really, he knows how to uh, how to use the Mixolydian. He knows how to use the uh, the Dorian mode. Uh, so if you have this B minor chord, right? He uses that. You can use that. 
Uh, that would be your uh, B Dorian scale. So if you got. It's a great, great uh, scale. Or if you want to not even, if you want to just add that ninth into there. That gets you into the Allman Brothers territory. That gets you into, uh, you know. You start getting into some more interesting licks. Now I added that ninth in there. Right, so I'm using, I got my B minor. Love that, love that sound. into some other cool notes. Using a little uh, dip. Use a little Phrygia in there. There's a lot of really, really interesting uh, things. Stevie Ray would use the flat nine a lot. I think it's a really. So I used the flat nine off that uh, this minor pentatonic, but he's really thinking of that. There's your ninth. So, but that's really coming out of this. So right here, so I'm using So I'm using an A major pentatonic over this, which would give you a B Dorian sound. Or an A major blues. That's a cool, cool sound. Okay, so that's a flat nine. Then I use that blues against it, so. Right? So I'm using two different blues scale, blue, uh, blues phrasing. I'm using the A major blues here. Right, over B minor. Then I'm using I'm using B minor blues scale, but I'm using Ben. Just sounds like a bunch of notes to me. Well, guess what, my friend? You don't ever have to worry about it again. There you go. How do you like that? Um... Okay, so the Beato book, RB125, 20% off. Um, why A major over B minor? Because B minor is the two chord in A major. That's where Dorian comes from, okay? So um, 
if you if B Dorian scale. There's my A major, right? B Dorian is A major. So A major pentatonic will work over B minor. If you think about it, right? So what let's take the notes here. You got a B minor chord. The A is the root is the flat seven, root, nine, eleven, and then the fifth. Okay, so that's a... I don't like this dude either. All right, bro, you're band hammered, man. How do you like that? How do you like that? Woo! <laughs> I like it. Um, um, B, Dorian, A major are the same notes. Thank you, Jason. Exactly. Jason, for the win. Um, you can also use Phrygian, Justin. I'm, I've been known to use Phrygian a lot, too, because I think it's a kind of a cool... Um, I, think it's, I think it's a cool sound, right? So, that, if I'm thinking about it, it's really nice to go from the minor pentatonic, right? So I came down a uh, B minor pentatonic. And I went up the uh, a Phrygian idea there, right? That is really a cool sound, I think. So, I'm just going between the two. Okay, so here's Phrygian, minor pentatonic. So those two sounds, just going back and forth between those, um, are really good. Did I learn these modal scales at Berkeley? I never went to Berkeley, Ronnie. I went to New England Conservatory, and I learned them from listening to records when I was about 16. That's where I learned the modes. I remember um, I worked out... Um, I did it in G major first. What I called it were the... Um, five positions of G major is what I called it. Um, I didn't do all the modes, and I didn't realize what, what the modes were. So I would take G, G, and I go. And I do all the notes you could play in the position. Then I go up here. Then I go up here. Take all the notes I could play then. And then go up here. Uh, and that would be it. And then it would start over again up here. Then I started learning. I was like... I was like... When I learned the modes, then I, was, I said, Oh, okay. So this is Ionian. But it stops there. This is Dorian. But it start, stops there. This is Phrygian. 
or stops there, we didn't go up to here. And then. Um, uh, and then you get the Mixolydian. Aeolian. Phrygian, or I mean Logrian. And then I started learning, then I would start learning all those. Then I started learning um, string groupings, then I would skip string. Right? Then I would uh, skip strings, but try and play all the same notes uh, from G major. Uh. So right there, thank you, baby Barbie. What's up? Uh, so, so here I am. Um, I am playing. Um, I'm taking all the notes of G major, but I'm going to play right, and I skip a string. So I'm playing B C G A C D A B. That's the only tricky one. Whoops. I love that. So that kind of stuff is really, really cool, I think. So uh, I'm playing that string skipping thing. And uh, you get some really, really cool licks out of there. You can also... Um, skip even more strings, right? So you could actually take, I could play. So I'm going here, um, F sharp G, G A. Right? Love that sound. That's really, um, uh, that sounds really fresh to me because of the the huge um, because of the huge distance between those, right? Cliffs of Dover, right? Oops. But that's all G major. I'm picking all those, really. Uh. You can pick all those, I mean, if you do that. Hybrid pick, or... I'm just picking them. I'm, I guess I'm doing some hammer-ons. Um, sometimes you come for the band hammers. Um, yeah, so all that string skipping stuff is really, really cool. That's where that Cliffs of Dover stuff comes in. You know, be like a... So you take one drone note and you take... Just hybrid picket and everything. So I'm using D and C. 
and put that high high string on there. Okay. Uh, another thing that, that I did too was I would practice because I heard that people like um, uh, would that would play vertically on one string. Some guitar players. So I would start to learn. I, I would practice my 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 uh, scales on one string. Like that. Then I would do stuff like this. Uh. Stuff like that where I do pedal points. And then I would go and do that on all sets of strings. Uh, the Beato book, RB125. You got any questions? It's all in there. Um, one does not simply just hybrid pick it. <laughs> what are you talking about, Andrew? Of course, you just do it, right? I've never played that before, actually. Can I show you an example of octave displacement? That would be octave displacement. That's octave displacement. That, that's active displacement. Um, you know, playing scales like this, if you do it. That'd be a diminished scale in sevenths. Um, but active displacement, you know. I do a lot of stuff like that too, you're right. Like that. I use, uh, I'm doing, let's see if I do that. Yeah, so, um, Love those kind of intervals like that. That's kind of a cool sound. that string skipping stuff there. Oh man. I'm um that would sound great with a touch of verb. I you know I have my little delay here if I had my I got my delay on now. A little bit too much though here. Let me back it off a bit. That's hard to play. Woo! That is hard. There, try it again. Let me get. It. Ah! Almost hold on. Oh, 
Um, anyways, that's, that's, uh, I've been playing a lot today. It, it kind of wears me out. I played for about three, four hours already today. Um, that actually honestly makes me really, uh, you know, I'm starting to sweat a little bit here. Oh, thumb. Oh, random question. Why does E major to C major sound good? Because it's a third modulation. Um, where are the pentatonics? Way back to the beginning. Where's all the thumbs up? Let's see it. Come on. Boom. I did three band hammers. No thumbs up. <laughs> stretch Rick. I like that. I'm, I'm trying to stretch. Uh, Beato Extreme Mode activated. You know what? I never really get into this... Uh, I never really play on these live streams like that. This is the first time where I kind of, as I'm going along, I'm playing more. It's actually really fun. Thank you, Matthew. Um, it's actually fun to kind of, you know, just go for it. I need a water bottle. Subi, you're right. I need to have, I don't have my water bottle here. I, I have a drink out, out there in the other room and I, I accidentally left it in there. Um, but that stuff is is really, taxing to play but it sounds so to me it sounds so hip when you can just rip those things right off you know it feels good um uh pitchfork review on on Greta Van Fleet was it was brutal I've only read one review that was worse than that for somebody, and it was my friend's. Uh, I, I actually I don't even want to say what this, what what my friend Rob's old band, the review that they said. It was way worse than that on his band's record. Oh God! Ouch! Hey, people didn't like Zeppelin when they came on either. They wrote they wrote uh, bad reviews on them too. So, you know. So there you go. Okay. Everybody, wait, what is, okay, who did I miss here? Is there a question here? Shredmaster, Trolls, what's up? Thank you, appreciate that. And for the heavy breather, Matthew, it's awesome. Um, so, do I own any baritone guitars? I don't own any eight strings, I don't have any seven strings, uh, but I've tuned guitars to baritone all the time. Sometimes I would have a guitar kind of dedicated to baritone tuning, but I didn't have one actually set up. Um, I didn't have one set up for it, you know, or I had one set up for it, but um, but I don't have a specific baritone guitar that has a longer scale. Um, anyways, we'll talk about this later. This is great. You guys are the best. RB125, Beato, but you can buy my the my mugs, buy the set of mugs if you bought my Beato book, because those are those are uh, how you learn what scales are what. I've got mugs that have all the formulas of all the scales on them. I don't know if I have one here. Yeah, right here, look, check it out. You can find these on my website too. This is the uh this is the um double uh what is this one? Double harmonic major. I don't have my glasses on. Double harmonic major. This is the hardest one to memorize. It's got all the formulas of all the scales on there. So if someone asks you, yo, what's Phrygian? Uh, what is ultra Phrygian? And you'd be like, uh, you take a drink of your coffee and say, oh, you know, one flat, two flat, three flat, four, five flat, six double flat, seven, right? Ultra, ultra Phrygian. So if you want to know these, when you're drinking coffee, because this is how you learn how to play really well, is you drink tons of coffee and you practice. Uh, okay, so you guys are the best. I'm out of here. Um, we're all good. Watch the beginning of the live stream. This one got gradually 